What up world and we're back. So we're gonna be going over aircraft hydraulics today. I have my setup, it's mostly done. I have to do return line on this number six. Uh, but let's get into kind of how all this works. So we're gonna start off with the reservoir first because this is where the fluid is held. This is an A6 aircraft tank. Well, an air an A6, they also have D2s, they also have coconuts. Uh, these are the oxygen tanks because the planes for World War II were not pressurized and once they went up to a certain altitude, they needed oxygen. So we use these, uh, we weld on this on the bottom side and then we weld the top port so we could fill fluid and then we got that fluid that could come out. Uh, the biggest thing about these, just be cautious of which ones you're gonna do because there is an aluminum and then there's the steel version. So there's a couple different variants. Um, these actually are made in Aurora, Ohio. Uh, there's a couple other places that made them but I believe they actually still make them in Aurora, Ohio, but it's just you have to do huge bulk quantity purchases, but they also do a lot of reproductions of these. Um, so you can keep your eye out. The OG ones, there's two different variations that are pretty popular. Middle has, or the common one has a line kind of down the middle. And then there's another one that has uh, more lines. So this feeds through, goes to the pump head. The pump head on all Pascos except for roosters are three quarters. Roosters are one inch. So we're gonna go through the PESCO motor is actually spinning this gear inside of here and pulling fluid out, sending fluid in. Um, so this is a PESCO 777. They call them 777s because the part number on these designate is 1E777. So they call these 777s. So you could run different pump heads. This is a 777 pump head with a 777 actual motor, but there's a couple different variations. Uh, you also have pumps like your 280s, your 301s, uh, there's tons of them. Um, then you get triple sevens that are shotguns. Uh, you get your roosters, as I mentioned. So there's a lot of different designations. When you say pascos, it's just a layman term. It's kind of like tissue, but and there's a lot of different options other than these, like your MCOs, your Westinghouse, your ADELs. So just be cognizant of which motors you're kind of talking about. Uh, pascos are the more common, but there's a ton of more that are even more expensive and more rare than PESCO. So uh, my fluid flows through the Parker check valve. My Parker check valve is a 3000 steel PSI made in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, so, and then I also have a number six. Uh, my Parkers for the number eights are from 1959. Uh, there is a, there's a date on them. So uh, yeah, so each one, if you have, I actually opened them up out of the package with Ted Wells that day at his house. Uh, but here's another, another one, this is a number six. This is date uh, fourth quarter, 1963. And then I have a super rare ADEL check valve. So uh, these you don't see too much. ADEL, people, a, lot of, a lot of people know them for the squares, but they also made the motors that I may mentioned. They have ADEL straights, and then they have ADEL sidewinders. The sidewinders came out of helicopters, uh, but we feed through that check valve, right? So once you pressure through a check valve, it ain't going back the other way. So uh, it's a backflow back flow preventer. Uh, so we get the fluid going through. The bottom port on a square, a real square, none of that bullshit with that uh, delta up top. This is a real deal, Holyfield, ADEL, or I'm sorry, ADEX. But uh, if you're running an ADEL, it's always gonna be open on the bottom port, and then the top is closed. So it's always open. Any, any dump valve you wanna always open. So, but, well, actually you always want always closed. Most people actually close the port on this one. So most people close that bottom port and they usually run it like this. They usually have the, flu the, flu the fluid to flow through in the top port. But uh, if you know how to use these things, you can use both ports. It's not done too much, too common actually. But we'll get back into as the fluid is flowing, we get to the square or out of the square, we get to the PESCO EQ, right? The EQ is exactly what it's doing. It's equalizing the flow of the fluid. There's a gear inside of here. Uh, there's a couple different equalizers. There's a Bendix, uh, there's like a no, no brand, kind of one that you can buy that's manufactured today. All they do is ascend the same amount of pressure. What that allows is you to run just one dump. Uh, if you're ever in your car and you have free flow, like let's say if you run one line and it just goes to a Y or a coffin or a T, however you want to call it, um, and you hit that corner and your car kind of just turns sideways, uh, equalizer is going to prevent that. So um, usually you would put it on the rear more than the front. Uh, most people run just one EQ. I'm fortunate enough to have two. Uh, EQs are definitely one of the rarer pieces that you're probably gonna find in aircraft hydraulics. Um, most of the time you're gonna find a number eight in port and then number six output, 
outlets. Um, but this is number 10 all the way around. Extremely happy to have two number 10s. They do differ. I'll post up a picture. Um, they do look different uh, aesthetically between the two of them. The number eight and number six are a little bit more rounder body and you'll just see in the picture. You could pick and choose the, the differences. Um, so I'm gonna flow through here and when I dump, fluid's gonna go back through. Um, I'm actually proud of this little fitting here because this fitting I was able to find at Summit Racing. This is a male and female number eight where this is a female to female, but I have to run the number eight union. So it just makes it a little bit bigger and it would have made everything a little bit bigger as a whole. Uh, I was able to find these and I, the only manufacturer I found that sells them is actually Summit Racing and Summit Racing is about, you know, 45 minutes away from me. Drove down there, picked it up, uh, put them in and I haven't pressurized the system yet, but I'm excited to give it a try. Um, but essentially the fluid's gonna flow through here. As I mentioned, I want the redundancy. If I ever need a check valve, I'm sorry, if I ever need a dump, I'm gonna have one right there. Um, so that's the best place to have it is with your system. Uh, you know, I'm gonna polish these out and polish out the candles. Uh, all of the stainless, I'm gonna polish out. So uh, I'm gonna keep OG looking OG and stainless polished. So um, we go through this, this slowdown. Slowdowns are Republic. Republic is actually a subsidiary of what was Parker at the time. Uh, it's Republic Appliances. You can look them up. Uh, there's a couple different things. All these things I'm telling you because you can hop on eBay and kind of find yourself. Uh, there's a couple different types of Republic slowdowns. Uh, these, we call them slowdowns because what they do is they slow down the flow of fluid. They're actually called needle valves. So when you're looking for them, don't call them slowdowns. If you're looking for somebody not in the lowrider world, call them needle, uh, needle valves. That's what they are. Um, same with these outside of the little rider world. We don't call these dumps. Uh, they're actually called solenoids. So I know that we use the Acumac solenoids because we run the power through them and those are actual, you know, solenoids. Uh, these are solenoid valves. So they call them solenoid valves because you have a valve and the solenoid actually opens it and dumps the fluid. So solenoid valves. If you're ever looking outside of the little rider world, what you want to look for is a solenoid valve in the little rider world, call them dumps. Uh, essentially a lot of this stuff came from rebranding so people couldn't find this stuff. It was a gatekeeping for a really long time. And I mean, it still is today. I mean, you gotta have all these magazines and shit and read shit to kind of know some of this knowledge. So I'm sharing it with you guys. So hope you guys drop that like and shit. So um, like I said, we go to this Republic Appliance needle valve, you know, and then we go to this site. This site is the common one. Uh, if you're looking for these, honestly, just go to Faucets and Filters on Instagram. Uh, he is the main supplier of these. Um, these shits are dope. They're number six on both sides. They're essentially sites, you know, what's what we call them. But if you want to look outside of the little rider world, again, we kind of gatekeep and we tell people what they are, but they, they actually go by different names in other places. This is a liquid eye. So here's the brand. This is the box that they would come in. This is the number three eights, you know, three eights right there. Uh, this is a liquid eye. They, they're brass, uh, but you're putting them on the return side they should be able to handle the pressure of just flow, fluid flowing through. So these are right now, as of recording this video, probably about $50 on the high side. Whereas these, ah, uh, shit, uh, they change so much. $400, $300 roughly. So between the two of them, I mean, you could take your pick. Which one do you want? Uh, these are OGs. So these are come from, you know, a lot of these were made in Chicago. These pieces in particular, these are, Reproductions. These actually come from the homie faucets and filters. So keep it a buck, you know, shouts out to the homie, reach, check them out. These sites, I'm sorry, those were the sites. These needle nose, or the needle uh, slowdowns or needle valves. These also come from faucets and filters. Talk to him, ask him where they come from. He is the main supplier of these. I'm not gonna ruin that story for you guys. You guys gotta do a little homework on yourself. Uh, but I was gonna run two of these on each uh, equalizer. First of all, I thought it would look badass, but also so I could lock out the cylinders and pull everything back in case I ever wanted to lock the car up and pull the system out. Once I saw the price of these, what they're going for today, I'm going to hold off on doing that for a little bit of time, huh? Um, but we go through that site. Site is just pure aesthetic. It just sees the fluid flow through, goes up. I'm going to do a hard line, number six. I'm going to do number six because it's just easier to get from a number six to a number uh, four. That's what this is. On this, this is actually a filter. Uh, we'll open it up real quick. 
Ted Wells told me he would clean these out once a year. The reason you clean these out is metal shavings. Uh, you want to keep this fluid as clean as possible. Back in the day, what they used to do is they would put a magnet on some of the reservoir tanks, even on gates, what they would do. But that's because the pump heads would kind of shear a little bit of metal, but now pump heads are aluminum, so there's no point in doing that. But back in the day, they used to actually used to be metal. You put a little magnet on there, and it would clean up those metal shavings. Uh, this filter in here, you have there's like a ring you have to pull out, a filter comes out, you can just clean it up. It's not a big deal. Um, but screw it back in, hand tighten it. Bunch of different filters that you could run. So there's a couple different pieces of this equipment that you could run on your gate setup. Uh, sometimes you might see a filter. You have no issue running a filter. What I would personally recommend, this is a number four port. If you can get a bigger port because number four is just gonna slow you down. A, all that pressure coming through on uh, aircraft setup, it's not that big of a deal because it's kind of nice to go down slow. We're not dumping crazy heavy, right? If you're on a gate setup, you might want to dump a little bit faster. You're probably going to see if you can get a number six or a number eight on the filter side. All that does is pull out those metal shavings, right? Um, EQs on a gate setup, don't really recommend it. If you are running it, maybe look on like a thinner stone setup. That kind of could be cool. Like I said, there's the Bendix variations. The Bendix uh, EQ is probably about $600 now. So um, they are costly. And uh, I mean, there are some no name ones out there too is just look up equalizer or uh free fluid flowing uh there, there's a couple different options this is the most universal piece in low riding a square these are a decks but you can run a dells um i if i had to trade these for anything i would personally go with the hydro air round body number eights uh, i just aesthetically think that it would run with everything a little bit better um, i'm running low pressure because i'm running you know pescos I like the looks of them. I always love seeing when people are using round bodies. Um, I wouldn't use a round body hydro air and a gate setup personally because, you know, gates just hold a lot of pressure. The hydro air round bodies are actually most of the time cast. They also had some milled versions, but because the it's just milled so thin, don't hold that pressure. If you're ever hopping in them, you're going to blow them shits. Um, the hydro air, if you go with a green monster, there's a couple different hydro air. So if you go with the green monster, that's a number 12 port, you're good to go all the way around. That's that's probably one of the best valves out there. So a lot of people really like those. Those are the ones that have the manual valve so you can release the pressure. So if you don't ever have to dump from going inside the car, you can just push the button down or the lever and it'll free flow dump. Um, those are sweet. These are the best looking slowdowns, hands down. I don't give a fuck what anybody has to say. These slowdowns, these are where it's at. Um, you might see some of the, the milled ones. Everybody makes a milled version. They still call them zigzags, but they look more like this with the hard bodies. Not as good looking. These are what you want. You can run filters on any of them. Checks you want. Checks it don't really matter as much. If you can get a, a ADEX check from Andy, those are kind of cool to see, but Andy doesn't really make those no more. So those are also, those would be female to female ports. These are male to male ports. So what that means is these are number eights on both sides. So that's all that is. Um, so you got the sights. Would you run sights on a gate setup? You can, um, it might get in the way a little bit. It depends on what your setup is. Um, then in down here, we have this little thing you might see down there that actually, just it's a catch jar because the gears are self lubricating so as fluid runs through a little bit kicks back and kind of just make sure everything's all oiled up so it's just a catch jar so um you always want to run those at the bottom of your gear because the fluid is just going to go down gravity obviously if you do it at the top it's going to fill up and it's going to overflow into your motor and then you're going to have a fucked up motor you don't want that right um there's a whole bunch of different squares that you could run or different dump valves um and I just trying to keep it a buck. Like if you're building a setup and you want to throw some flair, I would look for some slowdowns. If you find some zigzag style, OG Parker Republic style, I think those look good. Squares are a must. If you got a setup, bro, squares are fucking, you can run different, different types of dump valves, but my least favorite obviously are deltas, Italians. Eh. Uh, but once you get into them oddballs and, any squares, I love seeing that shit. Um, I would rather see, honestly, you grab like those LV, those LV ones from Black Magic that are just deltas or they have their baby monster greens. I'd rather see those 
because aesthetically they just look more pleasing. Um, I feel like the Deltas are just horrible. Deltas actually come from the Delta Hydraulic Company. It was a construction company in Chicago. Those came with the Finnerstone pumps because Finnerstone was based out of Rockford, Illinois, close to Chicago. Um, so that's the reason those are so popular and they were inexpensive. But we actually haven't used the real Deltas in a long time. We were just reproducing Chinese carbon copies of the real ones. Sorry to break it to you guys, but yeah, that's the fact. Um, but those are the pieces I would look for on a setup, you know, hardline everything. I don't go fuck if it's a gate or if it's a aircraft setup. If you're running a gravity feed setup, most of the time your gear is going to be ugly as fuck. I'm sorry to tell you. Um, that's the part where I hate seeing gravity fed setups. Um, the best looking one, there's a 59 out of Southside. Somebody spent some fucking time on that one. And it almost looks like a straddle, straddle um, fucking pump head. It's, it's a good looking, it's a good looking one. Um, so, but that those gears, sometimes they take the gears and they just look like the ones that are just regular inside of the pump. Ugh, that shit looks nasty, right? Um, yeah, that's the part where you fuck it up, man. Um, so if you're gonna do a gravity fed, just go out there, look to see what the cost of an aircraft setup is. If that's what you want, why are you gonna fake the funk? That's like going and getting some fucking bootleg ass shoes and trying to fake the funk with it, you know? Um, unless you're running like that 59, the 59 is on point. There's a couple that are on point, but it's far and few between. A lot of times I just see the regular gear out here all looking nasty and shit. And then they have like a regular looking fucking fitting right here going to a nasty ass reproduction tank. Um, why fake the funk, man? Do that shit the right way. Have somebody make you a fucking gear and to put a little bit of time in it and make that shit look right, you know? Um, and that's just my opinion on aircraft hydraulics. This, if you have any questions, check me out, Kilos Media on Instagram. Um, you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna drop this setup in my car hopefully soon. So it's still spring kind of coming up here. So it's still cold as shit, still got snow on the ground. So check me out, man, peace.